Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us again. And we're informed of some technical difficulties, so we're just going to start from the beginning. Um, joining us today is Raymond Sang. He's the head of Ocean for Canada. Raymond, thank you again for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, you touched on your experience, and you mind kind of just going back and uh, talking about that again? Well, I don't think I need to talk about myself anymore, right? <laughs> that is not really that interesting. But I do hope everybody can hear our voice, okay? Because that is the key thing instead of just seeing your face and my face, okay? So um, the uh, thing I really want to uh, address more is we are very much focused this uh, interview on uh, Port of Vancouver, okay? Mm -hmm. As well as what uh, D.B. Schenker and Port of Vancouver has to do together, Correct. right? So uh, in that case, maybe I talk a little bit about the Port of Vancouver and Canada, okay? Port of Vancouver, obviously geographically very close to Asia. And then uh, because of this, that's the very close to the, uh, very connected, okay, with the Asia uh, market, right? So for that same reason, the ocean carriers are chosen Vancouver port, okay, as the gateway between Asia and Canada. For us, okay, we play the role, okay, to, uh, make sure our customers, okay, in Canada, across coast to coast, like Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Toronto, Montreal, all the way to the uh, Canada Maritimes, okay, will be taken care of through the port of Vancouver, okay? So, um, obviously, port of Vancouver has a lot of things to do, okay, with uh, uh, our supply chain, but then it's not only port of Vancouver itself can do it. Okay, we have uh, many, many logistics uh, stakeholders, mm -hmm. like the railroads, like the terminal operators, like the truckers, like the warehouse. The most important thing even would be the empty container storage yard and all this, okay? In order to eliminate or uh, reduce the, 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 the disruption of the bottleneck. Okay, so that is what I would like to address. Yeah, yeah, okay, perfect. And then talking about the port, and um, you also mentioned that you joined at a very critical time during COVID. Have you seen anything like this before, and how did that really impact the, the shipping industry? <laughs> I don't think there's nobody actually have seen this before, right? Yes, with uh, 40 years of experience, honestly, it's very unprecedented, right? Mm -hmm. So the COVID really uh, turned the world upside down, okay, and then look at our life, okay, it's drastically changed over the last two years, right? Well, good thing is resilient, okay, ourselves and the business itself, and, and also uh, our uh, adaptability, okay? Mm -hmm. So I, I think eventually this COVID will not necessarily be the uh, major factor affecting our uh, supply chain. Maybe some other factors, life goes on change a lot, right, as we all know. So um, what is the change, okay, obviously going back to history, okay, two years ago, remember uh, uh, spring of 2020, when a lot of countries uh, entered the lockdown, and then uh, there's no economic activities, slowing down, the factory does not really produce goods. So what's the ocean carrier going to do, right? So what they need to, you know, do would be to reduce the capacity to uh, reduce the sailings, etc. right? So all these have been taken place, but it's not easy for the ocean carrier just to stop it, okay? So it's just slowly going down, so it's okay. But then by summer, I think that's a little bit after summer, right? So uh, August, September, the world starting to uh, go into recovery, okay? And then, um, the factory starting to open up again, production starting to come again, and then the importers starting to buy again, or some of the outstanding purchase orders need to be fulfilled, then, okay, that is a very high demand. But then for the ocean carrier to using that moment, okay, to redeploy all these laid up ships, takes time. So end up, of course, we were starting to see, okay, lack of space, and then uh, the other issue is we, at that time, we did not even starting to see lack of equipment. It's basically lack of space, right? Mm -hmm. 
So uh, this continue on and on, and then uh, then we starting to see another thing is because the COVID measure labor issue. Okay, the labor at the uh, terminal at the origin, labor at the terminal at the destinations, all these are starting to have shortages of uh, actually resources mm -hmm. right, to take care of the cargo. So the ships arrive to uh, North America, arrive to Europe, and then uh, what they do is, you know, they, they just cannot uh, digest the cargo uh, timely. So they're starting to have this thing like the ship has to wait for docking, okay? And then we're starting to see congestions. So congestions also not bringing good news, okay, to our customers. Then they cannot really plan their uh, our supply chain accordingly. So everything is surprises and more surprises. So uh, we, as a, as, as, a, as a logistics service provider, what we need to do at that time was to try to uh, help our customer in a different way because it's, we have to be very creative because nobody has the experience how to deal with it, right? So, but uh, uh, for us, okay, we uh, actually did a very good job, okay, to, to, to uh, support our key customers, okay, to make sure the cargo uh, moving uh, as smooth as possible. Because of this, okay, the um, empty containers starting to put it into the wrong place, okay? So Asia need empty containers, okay, to ship it out. Mm -hmm. But then a lot of containers are sitting in the North America or in Europe uh, countries that uh, the ship cannot put them back, okay, to Asia on time. So end up that is a major shot of equipment happening. With the lack of space, uh, short of equipment and that high demand of cargo that's not really the best combinations so um, at the end okay the most uh, thing that we we actually got affected is the freight rate is going through the roof okay because of the supply and demand gap obviously so I'm not blaming nobody okay basically that's the fact and then you touched on some ripple effects of COVID. Are, are there any more that you would like to touch on for that? You know, obviously, because of this, uh, then when we go out to buy things, it's more expensive. It's just, you know, adding pressure onto the consumer prices. The ripple effect now, inflation. Okay, what can we do? So that uh, the only thing that we hope, okay, this uh, situation can be improved, okay, but need everybody's effort to put together. But it's not just we can plan something, okay. The the uh, the weather, the COVID, now with the wall, okay, all kinds of things are affecting us, okay. So we very important thing is I I will explain a little bit later on. If we could have some tips, okay, on how to uh, help our customers, okay, to mitigate the risk right. uh, or to reduce the uh, uh, the supply chain disruption. Okay, perfect. And then you mentioned that things could get better. When do you foresee that happening? Do you have a outlook into that, or when the tide will turn for those areas? <sighs> Supposedly, this year should be better, but then uh, after all we you know considering all the factors there's no structural change on the supply side there's no new ships coming in and there is no new capacity coming into uh you know the, the particularly in the trans-pacific services right so if you ask me personally uh i do not really see there's light at the other side of the tunnel would have a significant improvement of the supply chain disruption, unfortunately, till the end of this year. Okay, so we have to brace ourselves onto uh, good planning, okay, on how we're going to deal with this. Now is March, okay, so we have some more months, okay, to deal with this. So I do think uh, um, as, as a customer or as a stakeholders, we need to work together. And you also mentioned you had some tips um, for how to mitigate these supply chain 
disruption. Would you like to share that? Yeah, I, I put a few notes there, okay? Then okay. make sure I would not forget, okay? That's why I have to read this from time to okay. time. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, okay, the challenges that we have, first of all, you know, with the challenges that we think about, you know, solutions, right? Uh, I, I, have, I actually think of, okay, um, six challenges, the major challenges, okay? Number one is the capacity constraints. I think that will remain. Number two is the rising supply chain cost. Thanks to the uh, Russia-Ukraine crisis, the fuel price will continue to go up. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. This will be a major challenge. Of Customers, ourselves, okay, we try to divert, okay, uh, the, the, the cargo go to the west, but they all move to the east, so the east also having the same issue. So it's just passing on the geographical, right? So uh, number four would be the equipment shortage. Mm -hmm. I think that will still remain unchanged. The other thing, obviously, is the trucking side, okay, the truckers' uh, shortage is also there. The last one, obviously, would be the labor issues, okay? The labor issues, for example, we have today, okay, we all know uh, CP, rail, okay, have issue with, uh, you know, the contract with the employees, right? So, uh, in fact, CP, rail already issued the uh, lockout notice, okay, for the 3,000 uh, employees, okay, for, uh, happening possibly early next week, okay? So that is the labor issue. The other thing, okay, is uh, the longshore guys in the West Coast, they also are uh, negotiating the renewal of the contract. That contract will be expired by July, and that is a major uh, possibility to disrupt the supply chain, okay? The USA as in Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the points that I see would still continue to be the challenge of uh, this year. Okay. How are we going to cope with this? Okay, a couple of tips from my humble experience. Okay, is I would say very importantly is the relationship. The relationship with your service provider. Okay, to make sure uh, you, you guys are keeping good terms during the very difficult times. Instead of blaming each other, okay, we try to work with each other. For us, okay, as a forwarder, we work very closely with our supplier, like the ocean carriers, the terminals, parts, okay, railroads, to make sure, okay, that we could do everything possible to uh, help our customer, okay? That is the relationship we need to build there. Mm -hmm. But for the customer themselves, also need to have a relationship with us. The relationship, actually build up from trust, mutual trust, okay? So uh, if you don't trust your sub, uh, service provider, it won't help, okay? So leave these challenges, okay, solution to your logistics service provider. They will find a solution for you, okay? So I think that would be the first thing I would say, build, strengthen the uh, relationship, very important. Two, okay, communication. You need to communicate better, okay, with your supplier and origin. And then you have to uh, work very closely with your own customer mm -hmm. and your service provider, logistics service provider. So that they all know, okay, what exactly you need to, what is the priority of uh, certain purchase orders instead of something you, 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 you move to here but you don't need it for, for another 10 months, okay? And then they, they, they move those things first of course, that is miscommunication, right? So that part, I would say, please do look into that communication side, okay? Number three, okay, would be, you know, like I said, do not put the cargo at the wrong place, okay, that you actually do not need them, right? So um, 
important thing if you do have some promotional item or, or seasonal item, ship them well in advance so that this product should already be at your side instead of at the other side of the ocean. Okay, so plan ahead, okay, make sure your, your, your inventory is sufficient to support your sales. Okay, so that would be uh, three points. My number four, okay, would be your planning, okay, your cargo forecast, okay, that is the key because if you give your for, uh, cargo forecast uh, uh, as accurate as possible or as update as possible to your service provider, it would help them to get you the allocation you need, okay, again, I said capacity, 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 right, so the allocation, okay, planning is working together with your service provider. Okay, in that case, then if the allocation is there, your factory can produce the goods out instead of they produce the goods sitting there in the factory and they cannot ship it up. That is actually the wrong thing to do, right? So, um, uh, capacity is what I said. Okay, so we have to be very, very uh, cautious to make sure, okay, you keep your capacity uh, agile. Okay, capacity is important but then because of this okay you also have to make a good planning or calculations of your costings a lot of people in the past okay using costing using the cheapest rate okay in order to be able to cost the goods so that they could sell it to the ultimate customer okay but i think a lot of uh, 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 customer also get take the lesson okay that uh, it doesn't work that way during this pandemic time, okay, during this uh, uh, supply chain uh, uh, disruption. They, a lot of them, they base on the old costing without any dynamic, okay. What does it mean, okay, I would say, do not base on the standard rate. You should mix, okay, when you do your costing, mix with your standard rate with high or uh, like uh, expedited rate or premium rate, you know, a very famous word now, premium rate, okay, because that is what it makes to get the cargo moving. If you continue to uh, hold your pocket, not to pay this, at the end, your competitor in your same industry, they may do it ahead of you because they already have the inventory, they already have the good in the shelf that they already sold them, okay? But then you still have your cargo waiting because you do, you're not paying properly or costing it properly. So second last, okay, would be some of your urgent shipment, instead of you thinking to put it onto a full container, okay, maybe convert them into LCL, okay. The LCL usually would have a little priority, okay, on an uplift, but obviously they would help you to shorten your lead time, okay, if you think about that, for some urgent shipment, other than air freight, okay, but uh, LCL would be one of the solution. Last but not least, okay, would be make sure you make, you know, use a freight forwarder who can provide a very reliable supply chain uh, visibility tool, okay. Because in, you need to understand where is your PO, where is the status of your order, in order to be able to communicate with your own customer and communicate with everybody up among the supply chain, right? So to choose the right freight forwarder, I think that is very important to have, that they're able to give you a reliable supply chain visibility tool. That's what I want. So that's my eight points, okay, as a tips. I hope that people, you guys can remember, okay? But otherwise, I can't uh, support you. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for everything, Raymond. We really appreciate it, and I'm sure everybody enjoyed it in the audience as well. Christine, thank you very much. Okay. Perfect. Thank you all for joining. Thank you.